Hi, everyone. This is Matthew Cruz at Comstock Investments. I will be sharing with you the September 2022 supply demand report that came out this morning at 11 a.m. Uh, futures trading does involve risk. The risk of loss of trading futures and our options is substantial, and each investor and our trader should consider whether this is a suitable investment. So jumping right in, the average trade estimates did a good job of guessing what the USDA was going to come in at. So they, um, the average trade was looking right at 172.5 for corn, and that's exactly what the USDA came in at. So they dropped their yield estimates by 2.9 bushels from last month. And so that's came in right at expectations. So uh, it doesn't get any better than that. That uh, brought the overall production down to 13.944 billion bushels, uh, not too far away from the average trade was looking for. You can see down that drops us, uh, what about 400 million bushels down from last month overall. Uh, they also reduced the harvested acres um, from this 81.7, excuse me, 81.8. The average trade was at 81.7 and uh, drops down to 80.8 um, million acres. Uh, soybeans, I, uh, there's a little bit uh, positive surprise there that the, the average trade was expecting a uh, uh, more modest decline in soybean yield from 51.9 last month to 51.5. And uh, they dropped it actually down to 50.5. And so um, uh, 1.4 1, 1. bushels per acre. Uh, one bushel more than what the average trade was looking for. And so that's why we're seeing kind of fireworks uh, in the soybean market right now. We're up 60, uh, 68 cents in the November contract. So that uh, reduction will bring, um, brought the USDA production estimates down to 4.378 billion bushels. Uh, we were at 4.5 million last month. Uh, similar to the corn, they also reduced the harvested acres from uh, 87.2 down to 86.6. Looking at the uh, grain ending stocks, then that uh, the USDA pegged that at 1.219, very close to what the average trade estimate was looking for. Soybeans at 200, uh, pretty healthy reduction from, from last month's 245. So we're starting to get pretty close again um, to pipeline supplies and we are barely uh, barely started harvest yet. And so um, they're already saying that, uh, you know, the, the crop isn't quite still good, but not quite as good as what they're uh, estimating. And so they left the wheat unchanged uh, last month. It was at 610 and uh, kept that at 610 million bushels. Looking at global supply, uh, didn't hardly touch anything with Brazil and Argentina, left those numbers at 149 million metric tons for soybeans, 126 for corn. Argentinian soybeans were at 51 and uh, left that the corn at 55. We did see some modest changes here in the Ukrainian corn. Our last month, we had 30 million metric tons, and so they bumped it up to 31.5 for their estimate. Uh, you can see last year, though, uh, we're long ways off from where we were at last year in the Ukraine. And so, um, you know, reduced production by a third there. Um, they're at 42.1 million metric tons last year. Similar situation in the wheat. They had a modest boost to the wheat production estimate from 19.5 to 20.5. However, they're at 33 last year at this time. Global ending stocks came in at 304.5 for corn. Compared to last month, 306.7. Soybeans uh, had a healthy reduction. It's 98.9 compared to 101.4. And wheat, pretty similar to what the, pretty close to what the trade was looking for at 268.6 uh, compared to 267.3 last month. Looking at uh, Chinese consumptions, corn pretty much stayed the same, 18 uh, million metric tons for uh, this month compared to last month. They did have a modest reduction in the soybeans to 97 from uh, 99 million metric tons last month. So breaking down the balance sheet, you can see that they reduced the planted acres by 1.2 million, harvested acres by 1 million, 
you see that yield reduction we talked about 175.4 172.5 uh, amounts to 2.9 bushels per acre. They um, declined beginning stocks by 5 million bushels. Uh, so you can see overall production starts out 450 million bushels lower. However, the USDA looks to offset that with uh, reduced uh, demand. So they reduced ethanol usage by 50 million bushels, uh, exports by another 100, feed by another 100. Uh, so really when we get down to the bottom here, um, you know, they took off some of the, some of that lack of production and overall, where they reduced ending stocks by 169 million bushels. So that get, takes us from this 1.388 down to this 1.2.19 uh, billion bushels. And so, um, you know, time will tell if we, uh, you know, get down to a billion bushels that gets us pretty close to pipeline supply. And I think that's definitely the direction that we're headed. Um, we're getting a lot of early yield estimates that are pretty disappointing, especially in the western half of the Corn Belt. Um, and so, but uh, we, you know, we don't see demand falling off too too much yet, uh, too much more than this. Uh, we think that it'll stay pretty firm. Um, you know, China is still uh, uh, going to need to keep buying, and uh, we don't see that changing anytime soon. Looking at the soybean revisions, uh, you can see they reduced the planted acres by 600,000 and the harvested acres by 600,000. Here we see that yield drop from 1.4 bushels from 151.9 uh, last month to 50.5. Um, and so the, the trade was not expecting as big a drop in yield. Um, they were, it was thought that the, that the soybeans were going to hold on a lot better, especially with some of those the, these later season rains that they got, but uh, it doesn't, they a lot of the soybeans have turned real quickly, a um, lot quicker than people thought. And so I think the, you know, the yield may be, still be good, but not quite as good as what they're expecting. So um, they did find 50 million bushels more from uh, last season's crop, which they tack on here. Um, so that brings our production down 153 million bushels. Uh, and again, they offset some of that by uh, reducing demand. Specifically here, you can see um, the uh, exports, they reduced by 70 million bushels, crushings reduced by 70 million, or by 20 million, excuse me, crushings reduced by 20 million bushels. So overall, they, that dropped uh, ending stocks down by 45 million bushels, from this 245 to, to 200. And so um, soybeans uh, are starting to get very tight again. And probably going to get tighter as we get into to harvest, and, um, and that's why you're seeing all the fireworks in the soybean prices today. We're up uh, uh, 64, 64 cents right now in the November contract. Wheat, they didn't change anything. They left everything the same. Um, left the yield at 47.5. Um, you know, the uh, exports at uh, 825 million bushels. So ending stock stayed the same at 610 million bushels. So not a lot to report in the wheat market today. This is not the close, but just kind of give you a quick idea of what the, the charts are doing in the, in the December corn. You can see we're up eight and a half right now. Um, really like what corn is doing here. You can see that we've been rallying since our bottom here in late, late July. We've put on uh, over dollar back on the corn um, since the market had that major correction. Uh, late last summer, and we've broken above some pretty strong um, resistance levels here at this uh, kind of 680, 685 level. So we're currently trading at that 693 and a half. Um, so hopefully we can maintain the integrity of this reality. And, uh, you know, but a lot of that, of course, is going to depend on what we see, what what are the yields are going to be as we get closer into, into harvest. Looking at the soybeans, uh, again, this is not the close, but uh, uh, we're up 60 cents. Um, you can see a huge move for the day, one of the biggest moves we've had for a little while. Uh, but we're now getting back up to some um, pretty strong resistance levels here at this 1480 level. Um, so we might see some um, profit taking, some, uh, and, and uh, might be a little bit harder yet for before we break above that. But that's what we need to see to happen uh, is for, for beans to, to break back above this uh, 1480 level uh, to continue moving higher. 
look at wheat, not a lot going on in wheat today because they didn't update uh, any of the numbers. Uh, we're actually down six at the time um, that the report came out. And so, uh, but I do think that we're, uh, it looks like we're starting to see wheat begin to carve out a bottom here. Um, I like that the most recent um, uh, corrections were still higher than the previous correction. And so hopefully we're forming maybe a rounding bottom, uh, kind of similar to, to soybeans. And uh, not that we're going to, we're still going to see some, you know, uh, minor corrections here. And those are probably buying opportunities. But uh, I don't know that you're going to see any huge market route, um, you know, like what we saw here back in uh, late June, July. So if you're a bull, you're going to, you know, question the integrity of the, the Grand Corridor out of the Ukraine. Um, you know, Putin has made a lot of threats that they're, that he's, you know, considering uh, uh, stopping that, allowing that Grand Corridor from, from continuing. Um, a, a lot of his reasons are, aren't really true, but uh, that's what he's saying, you know, arguing that a lot of the shipments aren't getting to the places that they're supposed to go, especially, uh, you know, some of the poor countries in, in Africa. Um, some of the early yield reports have been disappointing. Some bulls are going to highlight that. Crop conditions ratings are, of course, worse than uh, the, were last year at this time, at least in the in the uh, in the corn. You know, basis levels are still very strong. I know at the, the ethanol plant and in our neck of the woods, they're still offering 70 over uh, for corn that can be delivered in uh, in September. And so that's I don't think that's ever really happened before. And so at least not for a long time. Um, and so I think you'll see the strong basis in old crop kind of transition into new crop. And it'll be kind of interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and of course, the, you know, we're, we're at peak acres. Um, uh, you know, inflation appears that it might be topping. And, uh, but I, I still think that you're going to see the Fed kind of continue to, to uh, uh, increase interest rates, although maybe at a lower at a slower pace than what they were doing. And of course the bears will point, point to that, that there's you know still a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty around the economy and, and rising interest rates, and that's gonna hurt demand, um, which is true to a certain extent. Um, you know, they'll also point out, bears might point out that, hey, the, the, uh, they still think that the corridor is gonna strengthen and it has over the last several weeks and uh, will continue to strengthen a little bit more. Um, and I think one of the other things is that the U.S. dollar is, is very expensive right now. Um, and that, of course, hurts our exports because it makes them more expensive and less competitive. And, uh, and so um, that's not really good for, for us right now. So and then, of course, Brazil is getting ready to plant their, their probably what will be their largest soybean crop ever. Uh, they just keep seem to grow and grow every year. And so that's another thing that the bears will point out as well. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to give any of our um, great marketing professionals a call at 712-227-1110. Thank you and have a nice day.